You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. Right, you are on with the arms room, kind of loudly. <clears throat> All right. Ooh, I'm Glenn. And I'm John. Wow, that is really loud this morning. Yeah, it's our board guy. Freaking new first day on the job or something. How do I fix this? <laughs> so, uh, bear with us for a moment here. It's all right. It's all right. Um, down to half level? Yeah. That's <laughs> now, say something, John. Yes, that's way better. Okay, cool. That's way better. That one Who was in here before, man? Someone with a mouse voice? Uh, no, I just got to make sure that the recording goes. So oh, it's okay. Afterwards. We're learning new things every day. Carry yeah. On. Carry on. Okay, we're good. All right, all right, all right. We're good. Now that Adam, we've fixed our technical difficulties here. How was your weekend, Adam? It's good. Okay. Had a blast. Was down in Tucson. What'd you do? Uh, I went and saw family, and I got a... Uh, buddy of mine who's down here on TDY for like the next five weeks. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, it was, it was good. My sister's in town too, so I got to see her. And family weekend. It was nice. Very cool. You guys do anything special for Cinco? No, I'll probably drink tonight. <laughs> That's kind of like a thing for you though, right? Uh, no, not really. No? No. I'm, <laughs> I, I would just assume because really you've got this huge table like of booze you. behind just, you. That... No, no. <laughs> it's not my fault. Mm, James, James. I guess we discussed this before that you get blitzed on one Coors Light or something. Yeah, yeah. Pretty pretty it's sad but true. Mm, all right. Why are you so mean? I'm a cheap date though, so I mean that could... And you're single still, right? That's yeah. Still single? Yeah. Happily. Yeah. That's a lot. Got a new haircut. <laughs> Looking good today with a polo shirt. And Thank you. A, Thank a, you. A new survival paracord bracelet. Yep. Yeah. Ladies. Had some time. Made it over the weekend. So. Call in, ladies. 602-399-7787. Yeah. Wonderful Adam. If you're wanting to get married anytime soon, go on a few dates with me, and I promise you, you'll marry the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my life is like good luck Chuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How was your weekend, John? It was great. Thank you for changing the story. I uh, I actually have gone three days now without smoking a cigarette. Um, spent some time with my family. Got to go see my other baby that's still in the hospital, and you know, good. Took the other took the other kid out and did some bicycling yesterday. A little sore from that. It's been a while since I rode the old mountain bike around mm-hmm. me at all. So, mm-hmm. but it was a good weekend. It just seemed kind of like a family-themed weekend. I also had kind of a good family weekend. Yeah. Took the kids out uh, and, and, and the wife out Friday. Did some organic shooting. <clears throat> you know the organic shooting. I do know the organic we, we shooting. freeze all our old fruits and vegetables. Yeah. You know, instead of throwing them away. Then you just take them out and lay them all out in the in the field and let the kids go out with the 22. Have at her, huh? It's a great time. You know, you hit like a frozen potato with a 22, man. It just bleh, explodes. I mean, apples and we got oranges and limes and lemons and all kinds of stuff out there and it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun to go out and do that and uh, of course, nowadays things are different because the kids are burning through the 22 and I'm like, take it easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll on that 22. Let's, let's concentrate on some marksmanship yeah, there, toddlers. Take a break. No 25 round magazines for you. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, it's a good time. And then, uh, then we went home and built the world's greatest blanket fort. Sounds pretty epic. Yeah, nice, good stuff, good stuff. And uh, I've pretty much been hanging out in it all weekend. I, I I had to come down to Phoenix to teach a class on Saturday, our IFAC lifesaver class. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite classes to teach because it's real world and very good information. And uh, yeah, went home and spent more time in the blanket fort. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yesterday, spent more time in the blanket fort. It was awesome. Nice. Huge. Huge blanket for it. Totally kid style too. He's like held together by hopes and dreams and clamps. <laughs> Propped up. Well, I with think the kids. The kids part chairs. is the hopes and dreams. The dad part would be the clamps. <laughs> That's the clamps. So lots of fun. If you haven't built a blanket fort in a while, highly recommend it. Yeah, just go for it, man. Go for it. Even if you're like single, Adam, go home build a blanket fort. You feel better about everything instantly. Yeah, guarantee it. Well, I'll uh, 
<laughs> can use your old, I'll it, let man. you I'll let you know next week. <laughs> you can use your old ponchos and poncho liners. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. It's good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. So uh, so today, we'll see anything else we need to talk about? Recent events, current events, anything that was uh, amazing and incredible happening? Not that I know um, of. Nothing. I didn't I don't watch the news on the weekend. Nothing I can think of that's really applicable no, to nothing to what we're doing. No. Uh, no major shootings. Thank no. Goodness. Uh yeah, good stuff. No new laws, no new Bundy ranches, no new craziness. It's been Pretty a slow week. Of, yeah, uneventful. Yeah, slow week. Everyone's prepping for Cinco, I guess. Yeah, everybody's Some relaxing. Bad guys are prepping for Cinco. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. All right, so today we're going to be talking about everyday carry. Oh, Lord. And I know you said one thing we were talking before the show even started, John, about everyday carry. So yes. So people who don't know a lot about the, the EDC movement or the everyday carry movement, uh, you are in for a surprise if you ever go to YouTube and type oh, in my Lord. EDC. And John watched a whole yeah, bunch of Yeah, I did. Uh, I spent uh, a couple hours Friday night, a couple hours Saturday night, and even a couple hours last night just cruising through different videos that guys have posted. And, oh, my God. Like, the stuff that people carry is ridiculous. The amount of stuff that people carry is ridiculous. And the explanations that they give you are even more ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Well, I know <sighs> you and I did a video for independence training. Mm, it's been a while. A About a year-ish. Last yeah, summer, maybe. maybe. Anyways, yeah. it's on our YouTube channel. You can go to it if you want to go check it out. It's very different than everyone mm, else's mm-hmm. EDC video because... We're just we're sitting. It's on what like eight minutes yeah, total, maybe. if that. And it's no. both of us. Yeah, and it's both of our stuff. I don't stuff. Even know if it's eight minutes, but you know, it's both of us lounging on your back porch, talking mm-hmm. about EDC, and then pulling everything out of our pockets. And what yep. we carry is very similar, and it's not anything that you wouldn't expect guys like us to carry. It's not overloading. It's not overburdening. Yeah, you know, and so I think that's kind of the big thing about about EDC or everyday carry. And so uh, the idea of everyday carry, before we get into the contents or whatever, the idea of everyday carry is to be prepared, yeah. right? To Boy Scout that whole thing. Be prepared for whatever's coming down, you know, the pike, whatever, whatever that may be. But you can definitely take it overboard because when you're talking about everyday carry, we're not talking about, well, what do we carry in the woods? Well, that's your well, backpack. That's yeah. your survival kit. Yeah. That's not everyday carry. That's not the things I wear to go grocery shopping. Right. Everyday carry is what I put on every single day. When I put my pants on, these items are going to go in know, these pockets, the pockets at this time. Yeah, and and they're always going to be with me. And I, I think the way that we differ a lot from everyday carry is if you come train with us, as an example, with independence training. Mm-hmm. If you come train with us, you're going to see us wearing the same stuff at every class. Yep. We don't change how we dress or what we carry because we're teaching a rifle class or a handgun class or a defensive tactic class or a medical class or whatever. Like, we don't change things. Sometimes we may add to it. Maybe. You know? Like, I'll add an extra mag carrier. Yeah. We're teaching a carbine class. I'm going to throw a a carbine mag carrier on it. We're teaching with certain groups of people. We we may throw our armor on Mm -hmm. or throw our kit on or something like that. But but when we're just... The basics are the basics, man. Fundamental shooting and defensive type stuff. I mean, like we talked about before... And I can't remember what show it was here on the arms room, but you know, like, what's the realistic everyday carry gear for me defending myself? It's, it's my regular clothes or my underwear. Those, those are the two hey, things I'm it's probably going to be wearing. Man. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be in my underwear. And so, like, you got you got to think about the realistic everyday mm-hmm. carries you're going to have. What is what's going to be immediately available to you? And uh, and and so I want to talk a little bit about uh, just where do you where do you expect to find yourself? And I think sometimes people think about everyday carry and they relate it to uh, like you said before the show, we were talking firearms. You know, yep. it's, it's got to be that you got to have a gun with your everyday carry, or uh, they expect to, to to have some kind of major event. Uh, you yep. know, they, they do shit hits a mall the fan shooting, kind uh, of thing, robbery, a mugging. A, yeah, uh, they don't think about the basic everyday carry of just being alive and going about your daily business. And how many times do I use my flashlight for just looking for stuff? How many times have you gotten a package at home and? Like been, oh, where's the scissors? Where's this at? Where's that at? And then just pull out your pocket knife. Yeah, just pull out your pocket knife. I don't remember a time not ever carrying a pocket knife. So right. that's yeah. So I think that's a that's a big mistake people make with everyday carry. They carry too much, and when you carry too much, it becomes cumbersome. And they don't necessarily apply it either. Mm-hmm. They don't think about what do I do, where do I go, who do I interact with. 
are these things actually applicable? I watched one video specifically. Guy was talking about his urban stuff that he carries in a big city, mm-hmm. and one of the things he carried in the big city is a fire steel and striker. How is that applicable to walking around in a big city? You well, know? and that's and that's a problem. Is you you have to think about is it going to be cumbersome to me? Is it applicable to my situation? Is it going to affect my ability to do things? You know, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to use I'm going to use a quote that I may have used on the arms room before um, from from our friend Craig Douglas, which is he calls it tactical faggotry, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is there's just it's just too much. Like it's just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like you you can't just carry around everything all the time. Look, when I'm in blue jeans. I can't carry around as much stuff as I can when I'm in cargo pants. So, right. so because of that, I understand that I've got to I've got to carry a realistic amount of things that I can carry with me everywhere I go. You know, if I go to the beach, my EDC doesn't change. It, it may go into like a little Maxpedition pouch or something like the that. The man purse. My man, my purse. Your purse. It may go into something like that, but it doesn't change. You know, right. what I mean, if, if I where I go, my EDC stays the same regardless yep. of conditions. Regardless of weather, there's wait. You don't change for the seasons. Hell no, because I gotta know what I'm gonna have with me. I gotta know what I'm gonna have with me, and these are the five items or whatever that I'm always gonna have with me. Right. You know, and and you gotta think about the the realistic application, like you were talking about. How many people's EDC includes chapstick? Mine does because mm. my lips get chapped a whole lot more, and I have to shoot people in the face. Yes, right? yes. I live yes. in Arizona. The wind blows all the time, you know, up north. Mm, twice a year. My lips are always freaking chapped, and it hurts and it sucks, and I don't want to do that, right? So I want to put some chapstick on my lips. That's something that always goes with me, and it's, mm-hmm. it's useful for other things as well. But but primarily, it's like that's that's an EDC item because that's something I'm realistically going to use. My flashlight is an EDC item because that's something I realistically use, whether I'm trying to find the the, the lock, you know, the key lock to my key in so I can unlock my door or whatever, mm-hmm. or I drop something under my truck or my kids lose something under the couch, a little G.I. Joe or whatever. Mm. Or, yeah, maybe I have to blind someone in the eye with a nah, flashlight or well, whatever. But yeah. that is small chance. Realistically, I need a good flashlight. And if I'm going to carry that good flashlight, I need, a, I need to maintain it. Yeah. Like, i got to change my batteries, John. Like, I have to do those kinds of things. Dude, dude, I swear <laughs> to God, this thing's got a short in it. See, it's working like a uh, champ it's now. It's working now, all right. So, I don't know what's going on here. So, That's crazy. So, you know, I got to change my batteries. Like, I, administra- I administratively change the batteries in my everyday carry flashlight at a minimum of every six months. If I, if I find myself using my light a lot, yeah. like I, I use it a ton for a couple nights in a row or something, then I'll go ahead and just toss. I teach a low light, no light class where I'm using it a lot. Mm-hmm. I go ahead and just change the battery. Maybe the battery's not totally dead, but I don't want to be in a situation where in an emergency I need the light. And, and it's totally dead. I have half juice or no juice, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, it's worth the extra dollar or 50 cents or whatever a double a battery costs to just throw a fresh battery in there you know yep uh same thing even if it's a cr123 battery you know it's still Ugh. it's a buck a buck and a half yeah. if you're buying in bulk you know um it's worth it every couple don't months. buy the chinese you know, ones don't buy the chinese ones these things are so awesome but they're so <laughs> cheap oh look these 12 don't work at all Someone may or may not have learned that the hard way. It's a way. pro tip, by the way. <laughs> we won't discuss who, who learned that the hard way, but his initials are not John. <laughs> yeah. Buy good, buy good batteries. Panasonic, Surefire, go with those. Tenergy. Actually, I found the Tenergy ones are really good. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to look into those. I've been using Tenergy AA's, AAA's, and CR123's a lot. You can get them like, from allbatteries.com. Mm. Uh, you can get them pretty cheap. I mean, I can spend like a hundred bucks and get dozens of double A's, triple A's, and and. It's not a bad a idea because CR1, 2, my toddler doesn't know how to turn things off. Ah, dude, that's yeah. Dude, would scream through batteries. I got a platoon of kids, man. I gotta yeah. have lots of batteries. They go through electronic batteries like crazy, to the point where now I've started getting into like the rechargeable battery thing. We tried that, <laughs> but uh, that, that, uh, you know, that's that's you know. We're getting off track here. Yeah, we are. We are. Focus. <laughs> check Bring your back in. Check your batteries. All right, check your batteries. Um, wallets. And people, when think of, people think about wallets, like we, we see wallets and EDC that too much junk in them. Mm-hmm. Way too much stuff. Like what do you care? And then sometimes like not enough. There's a minimalist movement mm-hmm. of like, well, I'm not going to carry anything. Well, look, there's certain things I need in my wallet. Like I need cash. Identification. I need my ID. I need my CCW permit. Mm-hmm. I need uh, my hunting license. You know, uh, I need a couple business cards for myself for my business. Mm-hmm. I also need other business cards. Like I like to keep the business cards in there of my lawyer. 
mm-hmm. my doctor, mm-hmm. and my uh, my insurance agent. Mm. Right? And people go, well, I just put that in my phone. Well, that's right. Until my well, phone goes dead. I guess your phone's never died. Yeah, my phone goes dead. I'm in a vehicle accident. It gets smashed up. I just got robbed. Yeah. You know, God forbid, and, and they took my phone or whatever. Hopefully, they didn't take my wallet. Um, but you know, if I if, if they someone yanks my phone, I drop it. It breaks. I drop it in the toilet. Anything like that, and you know, I need to need to retrieve some important information. Game over. So at least I keep those kind of important things in there. Mm. And of course, you know, you got a couple debit cards and you know uh, whatever else you keep in there. But there's it's good to be minimalist, but you got to be again realistic about right. the application of the stuff that you're gonna have. Uh, pocket knives talked about that. Oh God, dude. Keep, I think I, I got I, a pocket knife for like my, I don't know, maybe my seventh birthday. Yeah, I was like eight, seven or eight, and I got my dad's I old school three blade old timer. Old timer, yeah. yeah. That's right. Thing uh, was just sharp enough to open up. Letter. Uh huh. That's about it. <laughs> With the three blades, two yeah. of which you like never used. <laughs> nope. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I mean those were true pocket knives. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. You actually went into a pocket. And um, well, I think people get wrapped up know. on the knife thing because they want to carry this big fighting folding knife. Yeah. And that's again, yeah, it's not realistic. No. How much do you know about knife fighting? Stabbing people, slashing people. That that's a whole other thing. You're not yeah. just gonna. I know just enough to where if I'm in a bad enough situation and it's my only option, I will use my knife. But that's not why I carry a knife. That's my last ditch. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's an, I carry a knife to open packages, cut rope, mm-hmm. cut clothing off if I absolutely have mm-hmm. to. Cut myself out of a seatbelt. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why I carry a knife. That, and I've just always carried a knife, so I don't feel right without carrying a knife. I don't, I don't think a man is a man if they don't carry a knife. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, it shocks me. Adam, that would do be, you carry a knife? Yeah. All right. You, that, that's a good point that could be argued. I, I just look at it like I, I grew up, you know, around my dad, who's a manly man, and I grew up around, right. and he always has a knife. Mm-hmm. I mean, nowadays, in fact, as, for a long time, as long as I can remember, really, you know, as soon as the Leatherman came out, the multi-tool, he's always got one of those things, too. Right. You know, and that's just, that's who he is, that's what he carries, and I just can't, I can't imagine, like, when another guy asked me, here, do you have a pocket knife? I'm like, you Why don't, don't you? Dude, beat your face, man. Get like Do some push-ups, how do you, how do you grow some that? facial hair, and go buy a pocket knife. <laughs> Get a freaking po- my my son has a pocket knife. You yeah. know what I mean? Why don't you? You're a grown man. Get a pocket well, knife. Well, come on now. But uh, so a pocket knife is important. Now the the thing about a pocket knife, a flashlight, you got to have good stuff. You don't have yeah. to go out and spend three hundred dollars on a pocket knife. In fact, I would advise you don't because I've you'll lose it. Lost a couple yeah. over the years, but you know you can get a good. Well, you carry. You're a big fan of Kershaw's. I'm a huge fan of Kershaw. And they're sixty, seventy Kershaw's bucks. Kershaw's Columbia Rivers. I'm a big yeah. fan of both of those knives because they're they're good quality knives in my experience. Um, and and they're and both can, of those companies back their knives up. They're they're backed up really by a well. lifetime guarantee. I've had to send mine in to get little screws replaced and things mm-hmm. like that. And uh, and they're they're inexpensive. They're affordable for the average person. Yeah. I carry a slightly more expensive knife, but it's just because it's I could afford it and I saw one in a TV show, and I was like, that's a really cool knife, and I want it, and that's why I carry the yeah, pocket knife that I carry. TV show. <clears throat> we carry a zero tolerance, right? Yeah, I carry a ZT. So made by Kershaw, or owned by Kershaw. Yeah, it's owned by Kershaw. So, I mean, all, you get a good knife. You yeah. know, if you're spending, if, I would I would venture to say, if you're spending... Less than 30 bucks, unless you got it on sale, yeah. you're not buying good yeah, If you're bending, I, I, would, I would might even say, like, less than 40 bucks. You know, I, I yeah. see, I see unless you them, catch I it on sale. On the yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm talking normal price. If you if your knife says Bear Grylls on it, you're wrong. Yeah, pretty much. All right. <laughs> so you know, get a knife from a good manufacturer with a good solid reputation. And I know you know, like it just you know, the Bear Grylls knives say Gerber on them or whatever. But yeah, Gerber aren't bad knives. Be but careful they... about the quality of blades yeah. you're getting because if you do need this thing to hold up, I mean, I have seen plenty of blades snap. Yep. And it's not just that. It's also the durability of the edge. What kind of steel is it made out of, and how does the edge keep an edge? Yep. You know, if it's if, if if you sharpen this thing, and then you go to cut rope, and it's dull, that sucks. I don't want to be having to sharpen my knife every single stinking day. No. Nope. You know what I mean? Uh, I want to be able to you know, sharpen it on a regular basis, maintain it like I should maintain my flashlight, but but I don't have to be sharpened all the time. So get a good a good uh, knife. You you won't be sad about it. Get a, mm-hmm. get someone with a good strong clip. Uh, I highly recommend auto openers. Not or at least assisted. Assisted opening, excuse me. Thank you for correction. Uh, assisted opening. If you can get an auto opener, that's great. If, depending on where you live. you know, yeah, We're in yeah, Arizona. Yeah, we can yeah. have whatever Pretty we much want. whatever we want. But, you know, depending on where you live, get something that is, you know, 
assisted opening, so it's easy and quick to open up. Um, we're going to talk about more of this stuff. Yeah. Get more into the mistakes that people make. Mm-hmm. A little bit more about the specific kind of gear that we should carry. Mm -hmm. Some of the crazy stuff that people carry. Oh, the ridiculous Lord. level of things. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we come back from the break, you are listening to The Arms Room. Everyone's going to need an attorney at some point in their life. I'm no different. Hey, everyone. It's James from Vets On. Whether it was my last will and testament before deployment or my ongoing custody battle for my children during my divorce, I needed help, so I lawyered up. If you need help, I urge you to contact Capstrom Law Firm. Capstrom Law Firm in Springfield, Missouri, services clients throughout the state in criminal law, personal injury, and family law. With over 13 years practicing law, Tom Capstrom understands both law and court procedures and how stressful they can be. Let Tom Capstrom Law Firm and his dedicated staff take the stress and worry out of a difficult situation by calling him today. We feel so strongly about the work that Tom and his staff are doing that he'll be a monthly guest on the show. Tom is a veteran and a listener, for God's sake, so you know the guy is solid and will fight for you. Give Tom a call today by calling 417-864-0552 or email Tom at capstromlaw.com. And don't forget to tell him that Vets On sent you. The choice of a lawyer for an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertising. Would your goal be to get you and your family out of debt? I can show you how thousands of people and families are doing just that. This is a business plan made simple. We offer everything from weight loss products to green cleaning solutions. Whether you're interested in making it a full-time or part-time opportunity to become debt-free, or if you are just sick and tired of being sick and tired, call Jamie at 602-295-9969. That's 602-295-9969. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities, day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. And if you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. What are you doing Saturday, May 24th, 2014? You should be joining us to help raise money for fallen heroes and wounded veterans. Hey everyone, it's James from Vets On. The American Legion Writers Post 34, in cooperation with its major sponsor, Vets on Media, is honored to present the inaugural Memorial Day Ride 2014. 100% of the nut proceeds raised at this event will go directly to charity, benefiting the Military Assistance Mission, the Army Emergency Relief Fund, and wounded heroes at the Balboa Naval Hospital. This event is veteran-focused from start to finish. The event begins at 0730 at the National Guard Armory located at 52nd Street in McDowell. There will be a breakfast and a chance to connect with over three dozen veteran businesses. A ride through the National Cemetery will also take place to honor the fallen. The ride will end at American Legion Post 34 in Cape Creek, where there will be a full barbecue of hamburgers, brats, baked beans, potato salad, live music, comedians, and numerous raffle items. So join us by registering now at VetsOnMedia.com or on the day of the event. Don't forget to tell a friend and make a difference in the lives of those that have given so much. Again, go to VetsOnMedia.com to pre-register today. You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. All right, you're back on The Arms Room. We're talking about everyday carry, EDC. Items that you should maybe consider. Yep. Items you should probably really reconsider if you're carrying them. Yeah. You don't want to be ridiculous about it. And uh, if you've got some comments, make sure you jump on our Facebook page. Drop them on the We're Live post from this morning. You can always call us, 602-399-7787. If you've got some comments or questions for us. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Call us in. We're nice guys. We'll tell you if you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we'll politely tell you you're stupid. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, seriously, call it. <laughs> Put up a post or something. Give us something else to talk about. All right. A um, couple things that uh, that I think are important to mention with EDC. Okay. A lot of people think about EDC and they and they think about violent encounters only. Yes. You know. And uh, we kind of told ourselves with this show, we're not really going to talk about guns. So this is about a, the only amount we're going to talk right, about. Right, right. Um, because violent encounters are such a small amount of what you have to be prepared for. Now, while we obviously encourage people to get training and to be as prepared as possible for those encounters, yep. because in the chance that you do hit a violent encounter, you need all the help that you can get. Uh, especially if you're in the profession of carrying a firearm or wearing armor for a living. You yeah. definitely need as much yeah. training as oh, possible. Yeah. That being said, understand with your EDC, that is a relatively small part of what you should carry. So so here's my opinion, then John will let you go with yours. My opinion on carrying a firearm. I think everyone should carry firearms as long as they're comfortable and have the appropriate mindset and level of training to do so efficiently, safely, and properly. Yep. I believe that uh, if you are carrying your gun in a holster that's 20 bucks, you're wrong. Um, yep. We've seen them fail too much. We know that in everything from someone trying to grab your gun away from you to uh, the security of that particular t style of holster in a force-on-force combatives type situation, it's it's likely to fail you. Get a good quality holster. This is something that you know your your life may depend on, so don't be afraid to to get something good. You don't have to spend a, a million bucks, but you know we had Jason from TCB on here, good quality holster for sixty five bucks. Yep. It's gonna last you a lifetime. Uh, and you should have a good quality handgun that you are trained on and proficient with. You should be able to draw from the holster, move, manipulate your firearm, do so in low light, no light conditions, do so under pressure stress. Um, you should be able to to reach those you know certain levels of proficiency. You should be able to get good solid hits, not combat effective as in anywhere on the target, but you should be able to put your hits where they count when you are not on a two-way range. If you're on a two-way range, your marksmanship's obviously going to suffer a little bit. When you're on a square range shooting up against targets that do not shoot back, your marksmanship needs to be impeccable. And uh, and if you're going to carry a firearm, you need to carry a backup magazine. Hands down for anything from reloads to defensive tactics uses to uh, just clearing malfunctions and, and other similar reasons. So you know, if you're carrying a firearm, you're not carrying a backup magazine, uh, you, you may find yourself real sad one day, mm -hmm. especially if you carry a, a gun with a lower than standard capacity magazine, simply because we all know in gunfights, bullets go fast. Yep. I want and, to have as many as possible. And magazines fail. Magazines fail. Every day. Mm-hmm. And they're great for defensive tactics. You know, you yeah, carry them on your, on your in support the side. One. Oh, oh man, they're a good, good. Better than roll of pennies. Heck yeah! So, what's your opinion on guns, real quick? Uh, the other thing that you, I know you've talked about a lot, but you you kind of glazed over there was if with your gun you need a good quality belt. Yes. Um, that that that's pretty much it. I mean, everything else you need good holster, good handgun, extra ammunition, the ability to effectively use your firearm, and a good belt to hold it all up. Mm -hmm. You know, because if if even if you've got a great holster and a great handgun, if you've got a crappy belt, you're not ever going to wear it. So it's not even worth talking about as part of your EDC. Well, and on that note, that that really takes me to what I consider the first part of EDC. Uh, when you look at what people put in these EDC videos, and they're pulling out oh my God, yeah. survival kits, and they're pulling out you know two guns and and eight mags and all, and you're like, good grief! Like you must be where does that all go, dude? You know, or lady, but. Here, to me, here's where EDC starts. EDC starts with physical fitness, got to be in shape to survive, things like that. And physical fitness is incredibly important. I, I, would, I, would, I would say that it's not really an EDC carry item. Obviously, we're going to carry around, but it's an everyday consideration I need to make <gasps> if I'm going to be... Did you just make up that acronym? An everyday consideration? Yeah. E oh, that's another EDC. <gasps> Invention. Ding, and the light bulb comes I'll on. Pass that. No one else take that. Yep. It's already taken. Someone yep. already registered the domain name. Yep. All right, so everyday consideration for physical fitness because that I I am my gear is gonna be useless if I can't if I don't if I'm out of wind, you know, yeah. if I can't <laughs> if I'm not in good enough shape to actually put this stuff to use. But where it really begins when when you get into gear. It begins with your clothing. You pointed to your shoes. Yeah. Clothing in general. I mean, yep. what do you carry? What do you what do you put on your body? You know, we talked about. Uh, you talked about flip flops several. Dude, several I shows. despise people. <laughs> if you are a grown up and you are not working in your garden and you're wearing flip flops <laughs> or Crocs, you are dead wrong. What about when I'm hiking down to the river though? Can I wear flip flops then? 
No. Okay, you can wear them on the beach. How about sandals? Good qual like uh, good sandals. Good quality pair of hiking sandals that were specifically yeah, designed for that. Yeah, sure, like those Divas are acceptable. Or Keens. Yeah. Is that okay. No, buy a pair of shoes. Man. I wear sandals in my house. Yeah. I wear flip flops when I shower, otherwise known as shower shoes. In your and shower at not home. Not in my shower at home. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when I travel. <laughs> And I wear flip-flops or sandals at the beach. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any other time, wear shoes. John hates sandals. For those of you listening, <laughs> anyone just tuning in, sandals are wrong. Man, if you had ugly feet like his, too, you'd be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, too. I don't have very good-looking <laughs> feet. They look yeah, like... The personal Would problem. it kill you to get a pedicure? <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> They've been mangled by 15 years of wearing combat boots. <laughs> All right, so no, no sandals, according to John. I'm okay with sandals under some circumstances, but here's the thing that I have against sandals. All right, or any, or just again, the kind of clothing. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you. Here, let's take a trip down Story Lane. All right. Dun, dun, dun. So I had this uh, back when I was teaching the Boy Scouts a lot. It was a cold and blistery night. I used to, uh, I used to make all my my scouts. We would always meet outside. <clears throat> when I was a scoutmaster, um, we, all our scouts would always meet outside, regardless of the weather. Uh, we never met inside unless we were doing something specific that had to be done inside. You know, we were watching a, a video or drawn on a whiteboard or something like that. Other than that, every single week we met outside. I don't care if it was raining, snowing, blowing cold, scorching hot. We met under a shaded area. You know, there was plenty of cover where we weren't going to get soaking wet or anything like that. But it taught my boys to be prepared, to follow the scout motto of, like, I need to look outside and see what the weather is doing, right? So one night I'm waiting for one of my boys' parents to come and pick him up, and it's late. You know, we're, we're 30 minutes past. I'm trying to call him. Um, no, no, uh, reception or no, uh, answer. I mean, and finally dude shows up. It is the middle of winter. It is freezing cold. We're all in like coats and the boys are all bundled up and everything. There's one kid, just this one kid and me left. Right. And, um, dad steps out, short sleeve, cotton t-shirt, sandals and shorts. And I said, uh, Hey, what's going on, man? And he goes, yeah, dude, I had a flat tire oh, man, I thought I was going to freeze to death changing that tire. And I'm like, yeah, it's because you're an idiot. That's why you almost froze to death. It's flipping, you know, teens degrees yep. out here. And you, well, I just jumped in the car to come get my kid. Yeah, well, what if something like that happens? You know what I mean? What if, what if it was pouring down rain? Well, I just jumped in the car to go get my kid or run to the store and grab some milk or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. Your EDC gear starts with your clothing. And that's kind of part of my issue with sandals. Like sometimes I'll wear sandals, you know, this when, we'll, when we're traveling, you know, long distances or whatever. I'll throw sandals on while I'm driving because I'm going to be in my boots for the next 10 hours training right, right, or whatever. Yeah. So as I'm driving down the road, I got my sandals, put the boots in the back. I'll do that a lot because we travel so much. just want my feet to be comfortable, you know. And that's like, what if, what if you break down? What if you have to use your get-home bag and you got to hike five miles back to your house or farther? And your 97-cent flip-flops Yeah, and you're flipping, you know, little tiny sandals or something. Like, that's that's not just going to be uncomfortable. That's eventually going to become impossible mm -hmm. for those for that footwear to, to support you in any way, shape, or form. Your feet are going to get burned. They're going to get, you know, frostbit. You're going to step whatever. on things and get cut and be yeah, sad. you're going to slice your feet up. You're going to break the things. I mean, who here has never broken a pair of flip-flops or sandals, right? Those things break, and then you're then you're out of luck, you know. So, footwear is certainly an important part, but so is the kind of clothing you wear. You know, appropriate I don't, clothing for weather for conditions. Weather conditions, you know. Now, if that means shorts and a t-shirt for you and a top, that's fine. I'm still kind of a pants kind of guy, but, yeah. but if you want to wear shorts, so be it, you know. But when it's cold, don't go out in shorts and cotton cotton socks and a cotton tee. What if you get caught in a downpour and now you're soaking wet? Hypothermia is just a few minutes away for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that happens all the time. You know, you see it with search and rescue. Someone goes on some little hike during monsoon season wearing all cotton clothing. They get caught in a torrential downpour or something like that. I mean, if you've, if you've never seen an Arizona monsoon, uh, you know, boy, that that's a that's a hell of a rainstorm. Mm -hmm. I mean, rain's so thick you can't see through it kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, buddy. it's a serious rainstorm. And people, oh, Arizona's so dry. It is. But in monsoon season, it's it's scary how yep. much water comes down. And so You're you waiting know, for Noah to show up. Yeah. Much, <laughs> and he's come floating by. You see animals two by two start marching yeah. by. You're yeah. like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but it's, it's, it's a serious thing. You know, oh, my God, that's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> you need a joke. I mean, the water doesn't go anywhere. So it's like, you know, it's, it's like, wow, it's... 
only been raining for seven minutes, and there's eight inches of water <laughs> exactly. in the backyard. Exactly. This I'm not liking my odds here. <laughs> exactly. And so it's, if you're out there and you get caught in weather like that, and you're wearing inappropriate clothing, you know, you're going to find yourself in, in trouble real fast. We see it all the time when we're doing training classes. Oh, you know, good in, God. in our required equipment, we always say, Pants are, pants are recommended, hats, sunscreen, even long sleeve shirts, you know. You know me, man, I'll wear long sleeve shirts in the middle of summer. I find that cooler yeah. because the sun's not baking on my skin. Uh, there's a number of other reasons. I mean, if, if you look at the at the Bedouins, you know what I mean? Those guys are yeah. incre incredibly layered. Long white man dresses. Exactly, and yet they are still very cool, you know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of ventilation. There's the layers help to wick the sweat away from the man body. Man jams are comfy. Exactly, you know, and, and it's a really good concept. And so, you know, we're out there training. But they wear sandals. <laughs> Get ahead and bring that up. <laughs> but uh, so so there's a there's a chink in their armor, I guess is what Absolutely. we're saying. No, no, their feet are like it's disgusting. Troll feet. Yeah, pretty so, much. They're like hobbit feet. So you know you, you have to look at we we see people on the train range. Well, ladies come, you know, they're wearing the little spaghetti. Oh, it's so hot! I'm gonna wear a spaghetti strap shirt. And then they're sunburnt and, and they've got brass down their down yeah. between their breasticles and yeah by the end of the day they're they're burned up they're burned up they're dehydrated they're tired because the sun's been baking on them you're going well improper clothing just because it's hot doesn't mean you know we want to expose as much skin as possible so EDC means consider the type of terrain and conditions and environment that you're going into and be smart about the kind of, of clothing that you wear. Belt is important to yep. be able to just hold it, kind of hold everything together. I think I'm going to stop calling it everyday carry. I think I'm going to start using everyday considerations. Everyday I like consideration. that. It makes a lot more sense. Oh, yeah, it does. So, <clears throat> he's spot on it today. He is. Yeah. Like he woke, woke up and had a bowl of Wheaties or something. <laughs> I actually had a bowl of Special K. No. Well, I'm going to leave that chips. one alone. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> It's all I had, man. <laughs> they look the same, but they're I know, gender yeah. dead. Yeah. Gender selection going no, on. No, well, whatever. I think they put estrogen in special K. Is that what you were crying before? It might have been. Okay. No, I'm crying because I'm not smoking anymore. That's why I'm crying. <laughs> okay. So. <I> got the. <laughs> all right. So. Now that we've got clothing down, all right, what kind of gear, equipment are we going to carry? I mean, let's be realistic. So if so, if I was going to empty, if I was going to empty my pockets, I'll empty mine right let's now. Let's empty them. All right, I'm let's empty go. My pockets. Let's see. Right. I got a flashlight. All right. I got a pocket knife. Yeah, move my phone over here. Oh yeah, my got a cell phone. I got my, I have my Redwire Gear business card wallet. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. There you go. I have my wallet. Wallet. Uh, hold on. Here we go. My pen, which I think I'm gonna get rid of because it's kind of big and bulky. Don't get your don't get your shit near my shit. And of course, my challenge coin. Oh, of course. Because I'm an EOD tech and I'm awesome. All right. So so yeah, I mean I've got my extra mag. I'm not gonna obviously pull out. Oh, that's not in my pocket. That's actually in a mag carrier. carrier. Okay, but this is this is what I consider everyday carry. So oh now we go. Okay, here we go. All right. That better. So obviously I'm not, you know, that's that's as much as I'm gonna pull out there. You you fill in the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. I, I got my little pocket trauma kit. I like my pocket trauma kit. You do. Um, I think it's important to carry around. It is. I got my wallet, my flashlight, the old chapstick Rooney, my uh, knife, and my phone. Yep. And that's pretty much everyday carry. I mean, that's just stuff yep. I take with me everywhere I go. And I know then that I'm always gonna have this stuff. Yep. I know that this is always going to be available to me. Wow, look at look at how small this is. I've in some of those videos, man, dudes were like covering yeah, half pounds the pounds of stuff like, pulling out. You know, like a quarter of this table is crap that came out of their pockets. Yeah, pounds. Now, of stuff. I will I will caveat your uh I do not carry a pocket trauma kit for the simple reason that I always carry a backpack. Like 9 times out of 10, mm -hmm. well, let me rephrase that. Every time I leave my house, my backpack goes in my truck. Well, I'm the same way. My backpack. And I have a truck. full blown trauma kit in my backpack. I totally agree, but when I'm elsewhere, when I don't, if I'm walking right. to a mall or well, that's here, a yeah, you know, or whatever, I need to have my pocket kit. That's a compromise that I have been willing to make. Yeah, and that that's what EDC is all about. It's about the consideration that we make uh, every day to try to get the the right equipment for our lifestyle, for our skill sets, and that's yep. that's kind of the next thing I want to talk about is how do we figure out what we're going to carry. Because you got ladies who are going to carry around purses. Obviously, they're a little bit more there. But you could fill up a purse with 100 pounds of crap. And none of it be completely useless. And, and be all be useless. useful. So let's talk about some things. First of all, you got to consider limited space. 
you know, I want to be able to carry around stuff that I can put in my jeans or cargo pocket. You know, I don't I mean? wear blue jeans. I do every now and then. Um, weight. Is this going to be uncomfortable for me to carry around? Is it going to affect the way that I move, the way that I can lay down on the couch? Is it going to affect the way I sit in my car? You know, is it going to affect me when I sit down? Is the weight or the cumbersomeness, is that a word, of, uh, of equipment... Is it too cumbersome? I don't think cumbersomeness is a word. Well, I'm making stuff up today. So yeah, you, go yeah, go for it. Why not? Multifunction items. I want something that serves multiple purposes. Mm -hmm. Flashlight serves multiple purposes. Chapstick serves multiple multiple purposes. My knife serves multiple purposes. I want something that I can use for more than one thing. If it's more, if it's just one thing, I can probably find a way to improvise it. Um, convenience. It's got to be accessible to me. You know, if I've got, I see these guys with the EDC. We're like, oh, I tuck stuff in my belt pants, and I got this thing hanging around my neck, and I'm like, good luck getting any of that crap. I can reach my hand down and pull out my light, and pull out yep. anything on this side, pull out anything on this side very easily. Whether I'm sitting down, if I'm laying on my front, if I'm laying on my back, if I'm laying on my side, you know, everything's going to be accessible. And uh, and I I think those are really kind of the considerations that you gotta that you gotta make. Weight, space. Yep. Multifunction and convenience, you know. What's that symbol you're making? Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, when we get when we get come back from break, uh, we are going to talk about what are we talk about. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell some more stories about some awesome YouTube videos. Okay, John's gonna tell some more stories about more EDC craziness, and uh, and we're gonna talk right at the end, just kind of about um, some very specific things that you want to consider. Uh, mistakes, actually, I should say, yeah. that you need to avoid if you're looking at everyday carry equipment. You're listening to The Arms Room. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. If you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. Everyone's going to need an attorney at some point in life. I'm no different. Hey everyone, it's James from Vets On. Whether it was my last will and testament before deployment or my ongoing custody battle for my children during my divorce, I needed help, so I lawyered up. If you need help, I urge you to contact Capstrom Law Firm. Capstrom Law Firm in Springfield, Missouri services clients throughout the state in criminal law, personal injury, and family law. With over 13 years practicing law, Tom Capstrom understands both law and court procedures and how stressful they can be. Let Tom Capstrom Law Firm and his dedicated staff take the stress and worry out of a difficult situation by calling him today. We feel so strong about the work that Tom and his staff are doing that he'll be a monthly guest on the show. Tom is a veteran and a listener, for God's sake, so you know the guy is solid and will fight for you. Give Tom a call today by calling 417-864-0552 or email Tom at capstromlaw.com. And don't forget to tell him that Vets On sent you. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertising. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you or someone you know suffering from eczema, diabetes, or vitamin deficiencies? Then I can share with you something to help remedy that with health and wellness. It can be a business plan too, which is a great opportunity to meet and interact with all types of people who care about changing lives. So when you are ready to make a difference, call Jamie at 602-295-9969. That's 602-295-9969. Hey everyone, it's Adam from Vets On. Are you or someone you know looking for employment? Then look no further than iVetX. iVetX is placing veterans with the right hiring companies. Join their mission in putting veterans in inspiring careers with ensured success. Access their national pipeline of military talent for companies. All veterans are pre-screened for 55 soft skill sets, 800 clarification types, education, experience, salary range, and so much more. IVETX can help you find the perfect job to veteran match. Your skills are based on what's needed for success in that job. 
If you're a hiring company or a veteran looking for your next career, then get started today and go to www.ivetx.com. iVetX, bridging the employer veteran gap by putting Americans veterans to work today. <laughs> You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. You're back. Oh, my goodness. On The Arms Room. You know, it's the, the hand things are supposed to come from out of people's view. Oh. Well, I like to do my own. <sighs> you got problems. I'm independent. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so... All right. All so, right. so... So, back to the other thing. One thing we skipped over. We did. Oops. What did we skip? Watches. Watches. A, if you're a man, buy a watch. Wear a watch. I am a. I'm a. I'm a really into good watches. John knows this. I love watches that are. I mean, right. Seven ninety nine or no, less. No, they're more like they're more like twenty four ninety nine. I mean, I I'm a high roller when it comes to watches, you know. And I'll tell you why. Let me tell you why watches are are a good thing to carry because you need to know what freaking time it is. Don't ask me what time it is. You should know what time it is. And don't have to pull out your phone and look at the time. Check your watch, all right? Um, I'll tell you why I'm not into really expensive watches because, yeah, listen up. All right, because, you know, I, I bust them, man. You know, I, I scrape them up and I knock them down, and they last forever. I've used Timex Ironmans since I was a wee lad, and uh, <clears throat> I had my last one. What do you mean since? Since I was a wee lad. Since I was a younger wee lad. There we go. Easy, Tiger. You're still a half inch shorter than me, all right? So... <laughs> So, so I've used these things for a long time, right? right. And uh, and I had one that lasted me ten years of hard, nasty, terrible things that I do. It just and and finally, <laughs> see what I mean about the innuendo thing? You can't say anything around Adam. And so, uh, <laughs> and so it was a one time I lost it in a cow, but. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> there's a total joke to be made there, but <laughs> but it's, so what you're saying is so what I'm saying is <laughs> buy a watch, buy a watch, and you don't have to go crazy to get a good one. I just I just, and and a lot of people will see my my paracord, your survival cord bracelet, yeah, my paracord bracelet, and they'll be like, oh, is that a survival bracelet? And I'll be like, no, it's just a watch band. And why? <laughs> and why? <laughs> why is why is it a watch band? Does everyone ask you that? That same crazy voice. Everyone's got that voice to me. You all sound the same. So, so, so the reason, because I, I don't like the rubber watch bands, because over a, after a while they smell like. Wait, no, stop, feet. stop. You know what I mean? No, dude, rubber yeah. does not begin to smell like feet. It does stink. Rope starts to smell like dirty, rotten. It smells like dirt. No, it does. You want to sniff it? No, I'm good. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> Give me a dollar. I'll All do. Right. I'll know you. Dollar first. Okay, dollar, dollar first. Dollar first. first. I don't know you. I don't trust you. So I don't know while, where you've been. All right, let me see. so while we're settling Here this we on which smells better, Here rubber or $1. rope? Smell my watch. It smells disgusting. It does not smell that bad. You're just saying that. For you me. wash it though, don't you? Don't That's been washed. It, it no. smells like. I wash it when I like you know go swimming. Oh, see, this side on. smells way worse. I wash it when I go swimming with it on and things like that. You know? Sweet. All right, so now I'm going to smell mine. You're making money today, buddy. Yeah, hell yeah. <clears throat> okay, does that smell better than mine? Oh, what do you know? It smells like rubber. How long have you had that watch? I've been wearing this, this watch one? band for years, man. Like five years I've had this watch band. I would say I've had this one since 2009. Or this might be the new one because I think I busted mine in two. I don't know. I know since how you 2010, stuff, 2011. Though. You probably toothbrush that thing, don't you? I do occasionally That's wash the I dead got. skin out of it because oh, it gets. Oh, that is gross. Get that yeah. out of my sight. That's disgusting. I don't want to look at it. All right, so so it's. I don't like the paracord bracelet because it's it's a survival bracelet. I like it because it is a comfortable watch band. It's right. flexible and it keeps right. the watch in place. And I don't like the rubber ones. They're kind of uncomfortable and make me sweat a lot. I don't like the the leather ones or whatever. They're, it's just a comfortable watch band, you know. I saw the paracord bracelets. That's right. Yeah, big money. All right. So so I let's can talk. buy a coat now. <laughs> So get a watch, all right? All right, that was the point of that whole debacle. All right, yep. so here we go. Uh, here's some mistakes that we want to talk about. First of all, carrying too much stuff. You know, we, we mentioned that again before. Look, don't carry so much stuff that it's uncomfortable to you. Um, if, if it prohibits you from living your life normally, mm -hmm. then it's too much stuff. 
You know, if it weighs you down, if you clink and clang, if you make noise when you walk, all right, if stuff protrudes from your body, you're carrying too much stuff. There it is again. I can't say anything around this guy. All right, cheap, low-quality gear. I think. Oh is, yeah, don't don't. That's do another that. big mistake. Yeah. Cheap knives. You know, people go, "Ash, that's a nine, nine, and nine knife," and I'm like, "Yeah, that crappy knife is going to fail you when you really, really need it the most." You know, because you abuse it just a little bit normally, and then you really, really need to rely on it. You need to cut yourself out of a seatbelt or something. That thing ain't going to work. <laughs> you know, and plus, stuff's just going to break. You know, don't buy the cheap flashlight. Get a get a good streamlight right. or a Surefire. Or, you know, get a good one. Uh, buy the best that you can afford to there buy. There you go. Always buy the best you can afford to buy. You're never going to be unhappy with good gear. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's been some stuff I'm like, eh, I probably spent too much money on that. But there, it's not often that I say, I wish I wouldn't have spent money on this <laughs> when I'm using it. You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, not maintaining your gear. Not replacing your your flashlights. Not lubricating your uh, your knife. Not sharpening it. Not uh, if you carry a gun. Not maintaining it. Uh, you know, not making sure, especially in hot Arizona weather. Um, Adam, man, I can't <laughs> try to be banana. I didn't, I didn't okay, say we gotta, anything. We got to change sides. I did not table, say man. anything, dude. I didn't even make a face. You was, hid your face behind saying. the computer, behind the computer screen. God. <laughs> All right, so now you know you got to maintain your. God, how old are you? <laughs> how old am I? How old is he? What do you mean? How old am I? That's, how it, you know, that's typical. <laughs> typical, Glenn, that you would just point the finger <laughs> at somebody the else. That's Passing really mature. Yeah, oh. really mature. All right. Uh, Act your can, age. Can we be, can we be professional I'm, here? I'm sorry, Dad. Jesus. Probably not, but we'll try. We'll fake it. He said lube. All right, that's it. There we go. That's it. You're fired. <laughs> I don't think you can fire that guy. I, I don't think you've got that kind of power, but good him. job. Good effort. All right, lastly, my last big mistake that I think people make is not maintaining, or excuse me, not maintaining, not practicing with their gear. Yes. Right. Not knowing how to use it, whether it's their firearm, their knife. I'm carrying knives so I can stab somebody. You know, women. Yeah, probably not. Women who carry, you know, t uh, pepper spray. Yeah, my boyfriend bought me this pepper spray so I can spray bad guys in the face. But they've never sprayed it. They've never checked it. They never maintained it. They don't know it decompresses after two to three years. It, they don't know it mits this big old cloud that blows back in their face. You know, they don't know how to use it in close quarters. They don't even know how to fight in close quarters. It's like all those things all add up when you really, really need to use your equipment. So, so what you're saying is, is that your everyday gear does not. Protect you. You no, have to it's know not how a magic to use. What? Just That's tools. not true. It's just tools. Okay. All That's right. awesome. I'll buy that. Okay. Like I've got a whole bunch of mechanics tools in my garage. Yeah. Not Still can't mechanic. build a car. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Um, so talk about your EDC videos that you watch. Tell me the videos them. they range like there were a few videos. There's one from a guy here in Arizona, um, and the reason I know he's here in Arizona is because he specifically talked about our friend Jason. But um, some of the videos are fine. You know, they they lay out. They look just like the stuff that we laid out. Sure. That is the rare exception on YouTube mm -hmm. for EDC videos. There were videos where, if you can see the size of this table, this table is what, like six feet? I don't know. It's big. It's big. Where dudes were six like... Six four, something like that. Dudes were like covering this table with mm -hmm. stuff out of their pockets, <laughs> stuff out of their backpack, stuff out of their fanny pack, stuff out of their purse. Be careful about what you I don't you acknowledge get. the term fanny pack. I don't acknowledge that that exists anymore. <laughs> but keep going. Well, it does. It's sad. Um, be careful about? about where you get your information. Like, the stuff that Glenn and I carry, it's not because someone said, these are the things you need to carry. These are be It's because these are the things that, over the years, of all the different things I've tried to carry, these are the things that have stuck. These are the things that have worked. These are the things, oh, my God, look, he's using his channel. I'm actually using my, totally, totally subconsciously, too. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> so... But be careful about where you get your information, about any of your information. You know, do your own research, do your own testing, do your own practice. You know, look at, uh, just don't take all of your advice from the internet. Don't take all your advice from us. Don't take all of your advice from us, by, for God's sakes, no. Go and talk to other people. Talk to other people that carry things every day. Talk to your buddies that carry a gun every day, that carry these things, that live a particular lifestyle. Talk to them. See what they say. Do a little bit of internet research. A little bit, you know, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But think about the stuff that you have. Think about why you're carrying the stuff that you have. My favorite, and make sure it's applicable because that on the video, these videos are ridiculous. There's one guy he insisted like that you have to carry a fire steel and it has to be dummy corded to your body in a big city. I see no need for a fire steel in a big city. Mm. If you need to start a fire, buy a Bic lighter. They work like champs. Um, 
just think about what you're going to carry and carry what you need to carry. Well, and on that same note, I read, uh, you know, we're, we're readers of Swap Magazine. You can write magazine. It's yeah, one of the yeah, few yeah, yeah, yeah. gun rags that I actually enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and they have a preparedness type mm -hmm. column in there every every month. And uh, many months ago, the guy wrote about EDC gear mm -hmm. for E&E, Escape and Evasion. Right. And it was, it was all kinds of stuff, like, you know, sewing uh, a, a small handcuff key into your, you know, pants liner, um... You know, carrying, uh, I can't even think of some of the other stuff, Small a small button compass, you know, sewing that into uh, as a replacement button, yeah. you know, for one of your pants or shirt buttons or whatever, like all kinds of different stuff that this guy was talking about, tons of EDC stuff. If I was a, a contractor, an overseas, overseas military contractor, and there was mm -hmm. a likelihood that I may be uh, kidnapped or, or otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, taken, yeah. Um, yeah, I would probably carry e and &E And EDC. if I remember correctly, that was part of that guy's background. That was that was his background. Yeah, he, that yeah. was definitely his so background. That's 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 the other thing is take into consideration the people that you're talking to about these things and what their experience is about what they carry and why they carry it. And I always kind of do this when I'm looking at an EDC video or any kind of gear review video or anything like that. Unless they specifically say, like, hey, this is a new piece of gear. When someone starts pulling all this stuff out of their pockets, I mean, if you were to get a close-up of the stuff in our pockets, uh, like, my knife looks like it's been through a... A, <laughs> a grinder. Yeah, a grinder. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's beat up. I've, yeah. I've done terrible things with it. I've hammered stuff with it. I've chopped stuff with it. I've driven it through logs, chopping wood. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff um, that I've used my knife for because it, it was, you know, a necessity at the time. If someone starts pulling out all their stuff and it's like all brand new, shiny, brand new in the pocket, and they're going, oh, this is my EDC gear. It's like, whoa, that may or may not. I, I may, I may understand some of the concepts. Like, oh, that's cool. That's a cool concept. Never thought about carrying that. But how likely am I to bet my life on this kind of gear that this guy's pulling out, putting out, saying, hey, this is the kind of stuff I would carry? Probably not really that likely, you know, because I'm looking at it saying this guy doesn't even use his stuff. Right. How could he? tell me that I should bet my life on gear that he hasn't even really used that much. So I think that's a, you know, that's a big consideration like you talked about is just be careful of where you're getting your advice on on everyday carry. And and be just I, I just can't stress it enough that you got to be realistic about the stuff that you carry. You know, if I was working up if I was a forest or a forest service ranger or something like that, right? I'd carry way different stuff. I would I carry totally different stuff. You know, uh, my my EDC gear would probably include like I don't know, like a I think a bear spray or something on my belt. You know, something I'd along those. I'd probably not carry a nine millimeter. I'd probably I carry, carry a larger a caliber handgun. Well, as a federal uh, as federal uh, employee, I wouldn't even be able to carry a firearm. Oh yeah, that's so true. So in a situation like that, I'm going, hey, I can't even carry a gun as an EDC. So I better figure something else out for a defensive tool. Maybe bear spray. I mean, that's good for four legged and two legged mm -hmm. you know predators. Yeah. And so there's. You know, there's different kind of considerations that you have to make based on your lifestyle. But importantly, just just keep it comfortable, keep it realistic, um, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep the same stuff with you on on you all the time. I mean, in like, the same place. In the same place. My stuff's always in the same, with the exception of when I go to blue jeans. Yeah. I move my light from and my your cargo knife. pocket. Not my knife. You don't move your knife? No, it stays the same place. My knife's always been in the same place. Mm, that's uh, my right. flashlight moves from my cargo pocket to my back left pocket mm -hmm. to the point now where there's actually a hole in the mm -hmm. in the pocket of my jeans where the you know crenellated bezels poke through. But carry the same stuff. Train with it. Practice pulling out your light in a hurry. Practice, obviously, if you're going to carry firearms, knives, anything like that, practice with those things. If you're going to carry bear spray or, or whatever. <laughs> spray yourself spray. with your own bear spray. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah! Gonna oh my God. It's going to hurt. And then go get in the cold shower. And be so careful of these pre-made kits. And multi I, I got this kit one time. Someone gave me as a gift. And it was like this little credit card thing. And it's like 17 in one survival tool. And I look at it and I'm like, that's not even a that's not even a one useful tool. Like I, you know, I could use that for maybe holding some paper down. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not going to try to use this 17 in one tool that's the size of a I had one of those. credit card. You know, it's just, it's going to break. It's going oh, yeah. to break. Yeah. So be careful about pre-made kits. I'm, I'm not a fan of pre-made kits, survival kits, medical kits, anything like that. Unless I've put it together and it's based on kind of my background and my experience. I just don't trust pre-made kits. Now there's some pre-made kits from some people that I like, Right, right. but if they're highly commercialized pre-made kits, uh, I'm not interested. Right. You know, if it's some, from some small training organization or some, you know, former, legit dude or whatever like oh I'm interested to see what he's got in his kit maybe I'd be I'd, I'd like to buy one 
But if it's some highly commercialized thing I can buy on the shelves at Walmart, I'm probably not interested in that kit because it's probably got a bunch of crap I don't need. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's probably not really. It's probably built more for the margins of profit than it is mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. for the usefulness and the uh, durability and, and life saving capability of the product. So, just be careful about your EDC. Be smart about it. Yep. Practice with it. Don't be afraid to change it. Don't be afraid to modify it. And uh, more than anything, just just practice and train with what you got. Be very very comfortable with it. Carry it all the time. That that's about yeah, because it's not everyday carry if you don't carry it all the time. Yeah. That was another thing I saw in videos. Well, I don't always carry a gun, but when I do carry a gun, this is the gun I carry every right. day. Well, then that's not EDC. Yeah, that makes no sense at all, man. Or pick a gun, not two or three different yeah. guns. Well, in the wintertime I carry this, and in the summertime I carry this, and then Dude. when I'm in social occasions I carry this, and I carry this and this, and I was like, whoa, that's too many and choices. And my Sunday holster. Yeah. My shark skin high ride. FBI the, the barbecue, can't. The barbecue yeah. Gun. Yeah. So, you know, just, again, be, be intelligent about your gear. Yep. That's really what it's about. All right. Next week. Uh, what are we talking about next week? I'm not 100% sure. Tactical gear setup. Oh, oh, yeah. I am not going to be here in person next week. Aww. Yeah, sad story. You guys are in for a ride next week. I will probably. I may call in. John will be here. We may have a guest uh, host in here. Um, but we'll be talking about how to set up tactical gear intelligently <gasps> so that your load-bearing equipment is not set up um, all and, crazy like Yeah. All I'll right. bring in some examples for you guys. Yes, you will. All right. If you have any questions about EDC or any comments about EDC, make sure you log on to our Facebook page, The Arms Room. Leave us some questions or comments. We're happy to answer them. Until next week, stay aware, stay safe, train hard. You can listen to The Arms Room. And the twilight